Hey there, everybody. I'm Mike Delisio. I'm Wendy Yi. I'm Chris Yi. Today we're going to be taking a look at a uh, relatively small box card game by Rainer Knizia. It's actually one in a series of three games that were released at the same time called the Criminal Capers Collection. Oh my Criminal goodness. Capers. There's some alliteration for you. This one is called either Hot Lead or Hot Lead. Which one do you say, Mike? My, my gut tells me Hot Lead. You're wrong. There you go. Look, I think it, I say hot lead unless I think about it, but I like hot lead better. It just rolls off the tongue a little less. It does. Thematically, either could work, and I think that was maybe a, a conscious decision. But A, a double entendre. You, that's what you're accusing here, Mike. Well, I'll leave that to you to decide. Here's the setup for a game of hot lead. Players are playing the role of detectives who have cards in their hand here. Uh, with that can be numbers 1 through 55. They're dealt 11 cards at the start of the game. And every player is then going to be trying to collect points here, representing crimes that they're investigating. They range from zero points all the way up to five points. Uh, once these cards have been revealed for the round, every player will choose one card from their hand and play it face down. Once all players have, you reveal them. Whoever played the highest card is going to grab the card closest to the deck. Whoever played the second highest will grab the next one. Whoever played the lowest card will grab the lowest one. And those will go to their respective players. You then reveal three more and continue playing until 10 rounds have passed, meaning you play 10 of the 11 cards. Uh, you count up points for the values written on the cards. If ever you have three cards of the same color at the end of the game, then you'll get 10 bonus points. And if you ever have more than four cards of a color, you bust immediately and will discard all of those. You can start working on that color again, but you will lose all those points. Now, there are two modules that do come in the game, the first of which are the Sheriff Stars here. Now, the first person to get two red cards will grab this, which will be worth a five points, a guaranteed five points at the end of the game. First person to get blue will get these ones, and so on. And there's also another module here. This is the Back Alley module, where there are informants. When you flip over an informant card, you reveal the next card, and this will be one together as a set of two cards, which is great for points, but could cause you to bust because this does count as now as a green card. There are also these dead end cards in which you'll take a card and place it over it there, and those would be negative points at the end of the game, but they don't count towards your bust pile, your limit. They'll just be set off to the side when scoring at the end of the game. Those are the two extra modules. That's everything for hot lead. Very simple. I think simple in structure. Mm -hmm. Yes. I would venture to say slightly chaotic card game from Dr. Reiner Knizia. Mm -hmm. Okay, chaos. Why, why that word? So to me, it feels chaotic in the sense that you have 11 cards in your hand at the start of a round, right? So you've got 11 cards at the 50, is it a 55 card deck? Yeah, 55. 55 mm -hmm. card deck, and, and so you've got 11 cards in hand, and it's a, simulta a simultaneous uh, action, simultaneous play card, flip it over, and find out where you, where you land, as you showed in, in the overview. And so I guess the chaos comes in the sense that you are beholden to the cards that you have, Right? Yes. You're never going to draw yeah. more, you're never you're, swapping them out, there, there's no pass two to the left and then next round three across the table. None of that. There's no mitigation in that at all. And so to some extent, I think the, the chaos comes in the sense that you have to be okay with not having a lot of control over what you have. Right? Yes. You have zero true. control over what you have. Right? What you do maybe have a little bit of control over is reading the other people getting a sense for what cards they may or may not have based on what they've played before. Now that's not gonna be applicable in the first round. But that's kind of what I'm getting at. So, did, does, did it feel chaotic at all to you? I think that I just went into this game understanding what it was before mm -hmm. I played. And so the expectation has to be that you don't have a lot of control. Right, right. The control and the, the fun of the play is reading whether or not other people have played lower cards than you, mm -hmm. higher cards than you. It's kind of feeling out the table. Um, and it's really just to play a quick, super fast card game. Mm -hmm. Like you could play this in 10 minutes. It's short, it's sweet. Um, so I think that it's definitely one of those you have to know what you're getting into. And I think chaos 
could be an okay word, but it almost feels a little too harsh for what mm. for what it is. I don't mean that in a pejorative turn. I don't. Mm -hmm. Chaos is not bad, right? Like yeah. there's a, there's a lot of games that have a chaotic element to them, and and that's just. But you, I agree with you that you need to know that going mm -hmm. in. Otherwise, if you're looking for something that has a you know a, a strong hand management or, or there's none of that here, really. I mean, it's really about what I found myself doing, and I don't know if you found this, is that when I would get my cards at the beginning of a round or or a game, I mean. It, it, a, game. a whole game. You a whole game is. <laughs> It feels, it feels like, a, like round. a round. It's it one hand of cards. Right. And so I would always play multiple games and maybe do a you know best score best out of three, three or something. Five. Like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right. Um, what I would tend to do is just mentally kind of group my cards. I'd be like, okay. High, medium, low. High, medium, low, right? Mm -hmm. And that makes sense because basically you've got three cards that are your market, right? Um, and so I would just kind of immediately do that. And then I, I would just try to do, assess. I know I'm going to be playing a high card. How high of a high card am I going to be playing? Am I going to be playing my 52, or could 38 be a high card this round? You know what I mean? So that's kind of the the, the, the mindset I went into it with. It's a game almost of obvious choices. Yeah. Right. The the lineup is just random. Like right? mm -hmm. they're not seated in any way. Not right. highest points in the top. It's just you know you're playing three players. Here's three cards. Mm -hmm. Pick one. Uh, and and so the choices are in a, in a way obvious. But then there is. Just a little bit extra there where you, where you have that decision. Is 38 high enough? Mm -hmm. Should I play the 45? Should I go all out with my 54, my highest card? Mm -hmm. Does someone have the 55? <laughs> right. And, and that's good. That's good. That's a good kind of chaos, mm -hmm. right? That's where not everything is, even though it's, everything is apparent, I want that blue card worth four points. Right. But then it's kind of how do I do it? Especially when the card you want is in the middle. Because middle can mean so many things. Right. Yes. I know when I can. I know when to play a two. I know when to play a fifty-one. Mm -hmm. But when do I play a thirty-six over a twenty-four? Right. I think the middle is almost the most fun area, but the most chaotic as you add players. And I, I think for how light this game is, those elements as well as the push your luck side of things. Mm -hmm. Adds more to this than it initially looked. I agree. And I think, I mean, my overview, I think, is a minute and a half. It's super <laughs> short, right? There's not a lot to it. But having that extra push or luck of maybe the highest card needs the lowest number, but also that might get me closer to pushing my luck. So do I actually want that card or do I want to go for a different one that's maybe less points but leaves me in a in a safer range of colored cards? When, when there's, say, there's some cool decisions. When you say push your luck, you mean like, oh, if I'm not actually the lowest, if I'm second lowest, I'll get a red and no, bust no. a red suit? or Yeah, so I mean push your luck as in I already have two reds. Do All I right. want another red card so that I max out on red? That is what I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, that's what you're yeah. saying. I'm sorry, I thought you were talking about numbers. But yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. That, that choice of maybe I'll go for a blue card is worth less points, but I'm more likely to keep it by the end of the game. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and I think it's important to to mention that you know we've we've you know said how short of a game it is, how you're pretty much stuck with the cards you have in hand. I do think that you have to be comfortable with a luck element, a, a pretty strong luck element. And that's yes. why I think it's it's. I don't think of this as the 11 cards as the game. I think of that again as a round, and because it feels less. If you get a, a a, a string of cards that are not very variable. Like if you don't have a lot of lows or a lot of highs, you've got a lot of cards in the middle. You are likely going to struggle. Mm -hmm. You know, you're likely going to struggle. That if you're only playing it once, you know, for those five minutes, that can be pretty dissatisfying. But mm -hmm. if you're playing in three, it's very unlikely you're going to get stuck with another, you know, hand of cards that are are not as dynamic. Nothing as but highs, right? Yeah. Ex exactly. So I, I think that that would be problematic if. It was a 45 minute game and that's all you did. That would mm -hmm. be problematic, but it's not. It's a five minute game, right? Mm -hmm. Play it three times, do best of three, even five. And I think that you start to not only does that mitigate some of that kind of feeling of, oh boy, I got stuck with a, with a lousy hand. It also allows you to get into the heads of the people at the table a little bit more. Sure. Because that is a part of this game. There is a meta that, that can be, that can be uh, found in this game. But that really shows through multiple plays. Absolutely, you know you how aggressive yeah. a, 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 of a player are they? Is somebody willing to throw out their you know, high fifty card in the first round? Uh, you know, in the first play of the of the car of the of the hand, that kind of a thing. You can kind of get a feel for how people like to play. You know, or do, do will will they push for the third card of a, of a set? You know, in the first third of of a, of a game, that's a very dangerous thing to do. Will they hold on to that high card? Will to they the have very it? bitter end? You exactly know? Yeah. right. 
One other thing I did want to bring up was uh, something that uh, we reviewed an, another card called Pum, uh, another game called Pumafiosi, yeah, part the of the same series, collection. Yeah. And there's another one in the collection that we'll be reviewing soon. One thing that I think is essential for all of these is that they've got some ad additional modules, optional modules. Oh, yes. Play with the modules <laughs> every time. Every time. There's maybe nobody. Maybe your first time. I don't know. Maybe. If you're, I, if you're the one reading the rule book, it's not bad to just say, uh-huh, 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 flip them, let's play it good. Yeah. Immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Throw in the stars. Right. The five stars. That's a uh, that's yeah. an incentive to get two of a kind right. early. Great. Mm -hmm. uh, and then those informant slash back alley cards. Right. Dead ends, yeah. Or the, the dead end cards. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That's great. Right. Just a fun little addition. Oh, no, avoid the negative points. But I really want that blue because mm -hmm. it'll complete a set of three. Is that worth it? Could be. That's true. I guess since it's a five-minute game, you could literally play one ra one game you regular and say, okay, we understand how the game works. Okay, now first player to get two cards of a particular color gets this, five points. Then Third these game. are some negative points. It, it's, yeah, maybe you can do that. Do you feel the theme at all as you're playing? Because I don't. Other than the name of the informant and the name of the dead end written on the card. That's about it. It's a Kinesia. It's a yeah, Kinesia. see, I was going to say that. Yeah, Kinesia does get, uh, the, the designer, get, gets a lot of heat for oh. not having the most thematic game. Sometimes warranted, sometimes not warranted. Warranted here. This, uh, you know, could easily be another theme. Uh, there, there are other games in this series that were other themes at one point. I think this one is unique. This is a, a new... Design. I think so. Yeah, I think yeah. the other two in the series were, were you know, re-implementations. Re and yeah. that just goes to show you they could be just about any theme. I do like the look. This is not going to necessarily be for everybody, this art style, I think. It might be a little divisive. Um, I like it. I think it is uh, unique and, and stands apart. But I'm not, I don't know if it's going to be for everybody. What do you think? I think that it's fine. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, I it's, like it. It's cute. It's quaint. Mm -hmm. It's garish. <laughs> it, but in a great way. Because yeah. it is... Like, a, it's a deck of cards. It's two right. little decks of cards. You play them, and it's quick. Ah, that one's a puma. That one's an elephant right. with like a teeny little derringer. Ha ha ha. Uh, but it 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 leans into how chaotic and kind of funny the game yeah. is. Because that's that's what the game kind of hinges on is we revealed cards. Oh, you played a thirty-seven. I played a thirty-five. I wasn't expecting that. Right. You and, got no points. I got seven. Right. Or I lost points yeah. because exactly. I, I got too much of a soup. That's great. All right, well, we could have played 15 games of this in the time that we've been doing this review, so That's let's get true. to our final thoughts, right? Uh, Wendy, what do you want to lead us off? Sure, I'm going to lead us off with a 7. I think that I think that for how simple and clean of a game this is, I think that it's, it's something that I can definitely recommend. Mm -hmm. uh, there's not a lot to it. You have to know what you're getting into, but if you just want to throw some cards in your back pocket, bring it to work, play it at lunchtime, you know, carry it with you as you're waiting for your food at a restaurant. It's one of those kind of games that I think that you could take with you anywhere. Um, just put it in a slightly smaller package. Yeah, I mean, you can even carry this box places easily. That won't fit my purse. My purse <laughs> is too small. For sure. All right. Uh, I'm coming in at a 7.5. I like this one a lot. Uh, the <laughs> it What it is, it's the second half of a game called For Sale. <laughs> Which you adore. Right, I right. love For Sale. That is yeah. one of my all-time favorite games. 7.5 is, is good for this because it is... Uh, for sales, a more robust game. This, mm -hmm. and I don't know who looked at that one and said, "We need half of that. <laughs> Cut that game down." But yeah. for what it is, it's chaotically fun, uh, and it's just enjoyable. I think it's best at three. Mm. Two player has a little bit of a variation where there's three cards out. The highest player chooses one of the top two. The second player chooses the of the remaining two. I think that's okay. There's less danger in it. But when, by the time you play with five players, it is too chaotic. I mm. think for my taste. But three is like a really sweet spot for this one. I like it. So I have a lot of fun. 7.5 for me. All right. I'm, I'm at a 7, uh, but but I'm not too far. I mean, the difference between a 7 and a 7.5 It's is, astronomical. Is, yes. It's, 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 it's <laughs> not a whole lot. But um, this feels like a classic card game, right? It just feels it like it's... it's it, this would be one that I can really feel like I can teach to anybody, play with anybody. Uh, very kind of a wide appeal. If you like classic card games, right? Just a numbered deck mm -hmm. of cards. This could be, uh, you know, something that would appeal to you. Um, it, it's a little bit on the edge. It's right on that edge of plays itself, but still you feel like you've got a little bit of control, a little bit. 
a little bit of control. What's more fun is the interaction you have around the table, that pushing the edge, pushing the envelope, maybe getting stuck with that minus seven card. Oh, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But the game is so fast that the, 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 highs, the high highs only last a little while and the low lows only last a little while. And at the end, you've had a good time with the people around the table. So Bravo. seven for me, 7.5, seven for you. We're in alignment. All good right. Stuff. Until next time, I'm Mike Delisio. I'm Wendy Yi. I'm Chris Yee. Have fun leading with lead. Letting lead lead.